Welcome to Lecture 2 of Ordinary Differential Equations. Today we're doing the integration factor. But before that, I would like to share that after eight years of waiting and dreaming, ever since my interview with former president of CCNY, Dr. Lisa Koiko, I've been dreaming of becoming a CC CCNY student. And finally, that dream has come true, as I've now gotten my official CCNY ID card. Yes, I know, very flattering picture. All right, now let me put it in my pocket because it's kind of valuable, and let's begin. So, first of all, what is the integration factor? Well, let's start with a review of yesterday. So, we talked about a motivation for differential equations, like whenever the amount that something changes is dependent on its own rate, like, for example, a rocket going around a planet, so its acceleration is dependent on its position, that's when we want to use differential equations. And differential equations are basically equations that take both the derivative of the function and the regular function into account. So something you might see in calculus 1 would be like this. While something you will see in differential equations might look something like this. So now let's get started with actually talking about how to so solve some of these. So actually, this isn't a differential equation, so let's get rid of it. So last time, we talked about separation of variables. We just write the differential form of, uh, of y prime. And now if this was real analysis, we'd have to prove that this was a fraction. But luckily, this isn't real analysis. So we can just, you know, mix and match things. So, for example, let's say we add y x times y prime equals y. Then by separation of variables, we get x times dy dx is equal to y. So we get 1 over y dy is equal to 1 over x dx. And then we integrate both sides. Now, normally, we'd have to prove that this is equivalent to this. But once again, we're in differential equations. So anything goes. So we have ln x plus a constant and ln y plus another arbitrary constant, which we don't really care about. So we just get rid of it. And, well, why do we get rid of it exactly? Let's call this one c prime. Then we subtract c prime from both sides. And voila, this suddenly becomes another constant, so we just call it c. It's gone. So now we just get y equals e to the ln x times e to the c, which is just another constant, which we'll call also c. So we just get y equals c times x. So for any function with the formula 2x, for example, x, y equals 10x, any function with a coefficient and then just a first order variable, going to work for this differential equation in specific. So what's the direction field going to look like? Well, we can sketch it out. Here we get y prime equals y divided by x. So obviously when x is 0, it's undefined, or in other words, goes up like this. And you might notice that actually this is just the formula for slope, rise or y divided by run or x. So it shouldn't be too hard to imagine but these just appear as radially outward lines from this direction of the origin, right? Not too surprising, is it? And that perfectly explains why all of the solutions look like a radial line emerging from the origin. So now, today, we'll be solving some trickier differential equations with the integration factor. So essentially, first, what we want to do is get it into what we call standard form. What does that mean? Well, essentially, we have the big bad derivative itself. Then we have y times some function of our variable that we'll call f of x. And this is equivalent to another function of our variable, z of x. 
By the way, I'm coming up with these examples on the spot. So sorry if I'm a little rough with them. So let's go with, for example, y prime plus y times 2x is equal to e to the 2x. Now, oh, let me uh, actually just make it 2 for a purposes of simplicity. In fact, let's make it negative 2. So rearranging this, we just get y prime minus 2y equals e to the 2x. So then what do we do from here? Well, we introduce something known as the integration constant. Mu of x equals e to the integral of f of x dx. Now, this seems completely arbitrary, right? What does it mean? Well, remember the product rule. If we have f of x times z of x, and we take the derivative of this with respect to x, this is just equal to the, the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the derivative of the second function times the first function. Uh, function. So what I want to do is replicate that effect over here. So we have y prime and then this missing d of x plus y, which is the regular one, and then f of x, which is this thing right here. And let's not get confused. So let's call this some other thing like alpha of x. So this hypothetical alpha of x I'm going to add it over here, too, because hypothetically, we're multiplying this whole expression so that we get something simple that conforms to the product rule. So now we want it to just be alpha x when we don't take the derivative. But then we want the derivative of this to be equal to alpha of x the same way times f of x. And what's the only function that has that property? Well, remember that by the chain rule, e to the f of x, when you take the derivative, it does f prime of x times e to the f of x. So that means, in the same way, alpha of x just has to be e to the integral of f of x, right? Because then by the fundamental theorem of calculus, once we take the derivative, it's the same exact thing, which is what we want. But then the derivative and integral cancel out, and we bring down the regular f of x. So that's the rationale behind it. Once we multiply both sides by the integration constant, we get y prime mu x plus y, and this is mu prime of x. Once we multiply both sides by the integration constant, we just abbreviate this as d dx y mu of x. And you might think, wait, didn't this just get more complex? Well. Let's use the virtues of the fundamental theorem of calculus again to get, once we take the integral of both sides, we take the integral because we want this and this to cancel out, so we get something simple. So we just get y times mu of x is equal to the integral of gx mu x dx. And just like that, this is devolved into a simple integration problem. So let's try this formula with this simple example, y prime minus 2y equals e to the 2x. All right, so, and you might be saying, how is minus 2 a function of x? Well, I mean, f of x equals a constant function, it's still a function, right? Uh, the only thing is it just doesn't change as x changes. So it's technically a function, and we can treat it like one in the same way. So we get y prime minus 2y equals e to the 2x. So now, what's f of x here? It's minus 2. What's d of x here? It's e to the 2x. So then, what do we get is our integration factor. Mu of x is equal to e times the integral of f of x dx. Should be pretty obvious that the integral of minus 2 is minus 2t. And then we also have a constant, so we have c e to the minus 2t, right? So now, oh right, I accidentally switched up to t, so the x, sorry. So now, all we have to do is multiply both sides by this to get this right over here, e dx. And I know we are skipping steps here, but 
let's write out the full thing just this once so we can be sure. So we get y prime times c and e to the minus 2x, which I'll actually rewrite as dividing by e to the 2x. And then we have minus 2y divided by e to the 2x times c. And this is equivalent to what? c e to the minus 2x times e to the 2x. But oh, wait, these just cancel out, so we get c on this side. Since we have a c and c right over here, what does that mean? So we just get this. y prime minus y over e to the, wait, no, one second. Yeah. So we get, wait, give me a second. Oh, yeah. So we get c times y prime divided by e to the minus 2x. And then we subtract 2y. And then we add the c right over here. And we get e to the minus 2x again. And this is just equal to c times e to the minus 2x times e to the 2x. But wait, these just cancel out, leaving us with c. So now, by the product rule, we can combine this into e dx of y times mu of x. So that just gets us y times our integration factor, which is c e to the minus 2x. And we don't actually have to differentiate this because we just take the integral on both sides with respect to x. And so we just get cx on this side. Since these two cancel out, that means we get cy e to the minus 2x on this side. These two cancel out, but there's still a constant once we integrate over here. So we get y is equal to x e to the 2x plus c e to the 2x. Or in other words, y equals x plus c times e to the 2x. Now, just to be sure, let's take the derivative of this, plug in, and make sure everything's OK. So our original differential equation was y prime equals two, minus 2y is equal to e to the 2x. So now, what happens once we plug it? We get y prime minus 2 times x plus c e to the 2x is equal to e to the 2x. So then, what happens once we plug in y prime? Well, if we take the derivative of this, then by the product rule, we get e to the 2x plus x plus c times 2 e to the 2x. So we get e to the 2x plus 2e to the 2x times x plus c minus 2e to the 2x times x plus c equals e to the 2x. So these cancel out and these cancel out, giving us a perfect 0 equals 0, which is the result we want, which means this is the exact correct solution. Now, once we get an initial value, then we can plug in. So that's the integration factor in first order differential equation for you. But once again, just to review, the integration factor is like an intermediate step we use so that we can convert what's on the left hand side of our first order linear differential equation into just a product rule derivative. And then, what do we do with that? Well, <clears throat> all we do is integrate so that this turns into a simple integration problem. These two cancel out by the fundamental theorem of calculus. And all you have to do is solve from here. It should be pretty simple, given that you have the right g of x and mu x. And what's the formula for mu x? Well, simple, once again, just e to the integral of f of x dx. And finally, what's the general formula of the first order differential equation we're solving? It's just <clears throat> our derivative plus f of x times y is equal to g of x. That's it. Thank you, everybody, for watching.